This is another edition of Let It Rip. I'm your host, Elders Bell, and I'm here with my good friend, DJ Dunson. How are we doing today, man? Man, I'm coming to you from the future, Wednesday here on the East Coast. <laughs> Me and my low blood sugar. Hope you had a big dinner. <laughs> Actually, I did, man. All I had was some gummy bears. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's more than the air I ate earlier. <laughs> but, man, looks like some teams went eating out today. We had some Ooh. trades going down. On, on a, a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Got your coaches um, feeling kind of choose, eh? That's actually pretty good. <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. Seattle, bro. What's what's going on with Seattle? First of all, not, not Seattle. What's going on with the Saints trading Jimmy Graham? What's dude, your thoughts on that? Dude, I, the, the, here's a, the funny thing I thought because I turned on the TV and I was thinking, okay, let's see what's going to happen. I thought it was going to be like a slow, a slow uh, uh, free agency. I turn up, turn, turn on the TV, five minutes in, oh, Jimmy Graham, <laughs> Seahawks. I'm like, what? You just paid this dude, what What was it, $40 million last year? You, you paid him a contract? You got him a contract last year? And I'm thinking, that that was one of your best, you, you, matter of fact, your, your, your first and second option in terms of uh, your offense. I mean, give respect to uh, uh, Marcus Colson, but hey, we got down to the five-yard line. You knew who was getting the rock. <laughs> no, uh, and, and that's exactly what Seattle's getting. But uh, yo, it's not just that, man. Sam, like you got Chip Kelly out there, Mister. Um, I, I call him. I call him. Turn down trades for what? He, he accepts every trade that comes his way. But like, no, let me. Sorry, let me get. Let me rewind yeah, a little bit to Jimmy Graham. Let's focus. Yeah, let's focus on. Uh, let's, yeah. let's focus on let me Jimmy Graham before we move on to <laughs> old Chip. But okay. I kind of, I, I, I kind of get why they would trade Jimmy. Um, because actually, Bruce Irvin, his new teammate with the Seahawks, said it himself. Um, I'm not gonna say go as far as say he's soft or overrated, but when he's on the field, you know they're gonna pass mm-hmm. because he he can't block and 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 that hurt. And if you look at the last few years, New Orleans running backs have been uh, they haven't gained much yards at the contact. You know, defense has been able to focus center in because they know what's coming, and Jimmy can't help it out. And uh, well, from, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with Marshawn and the passing game since they have a not they now have a tight end. Uh, well, they have two. They're gonna have two tight ends. They're gonna have, uh, I believe, Zach Miller. Is he? Yeah, Zach, right? Zach Miller. Uh, he had a foot oh, no. injury last year. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson is actually but, no, I think but, but also, but also Luke, uh, Luke Wilson and. Um, uh, I wasn't sure about Zach. That's why Zach, I was Zach like, Miller, I believe Zach Miller is coming back off of his foot injury. Yeah. But uh, definitely, uh, at least on the other side, you know, Jimmy, uh, his only job is gonna be to catch. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got that big radius, and they're gonna need that. They could have used that in the Super Bowl in the Reds on the one yard line, man. Too soon? Uh, they made that trade. No, too late. They made that trade too late. <laughs> <laughs> One season. Too late. Percy Harvin next time. You know, they can swap Percy for, for Jimmy. Exactly. No, I um, uh, yeah. I think honestly it's a good move. Obviously for the for the uh the Seahawks, uh they they don't they don't have a guy. I mean, no no disrespect to uh uh Doug Baldwin, but he does he's not a guy that you have to double or roll coverage to. Now that you have Jimmy Graham, I think honestly he's that guy where he's like, okay, we got a game plan for him. And the happiest guy in Seattle is Marshawn. He's like, okay, I don't see eight in the box. Sold. That is true, and uh, this is a much more complete offense than they have right now in New Orleans. They're they're a little more balanced, and they don't have a right. They don't have a Marshawn in New Orleans. And on top of that, you know, he, like Jimmy Graham, like he only does one type of quarterback apparently, like smallish, you know, uh, mobile guys who can roll out a lot. The same DNA, West Coast type offense. So who get the same passes? I thought because I mean everyone's always compared Russell to Drew. He's just not as as far as in his development because he's like a decade younger. But he's and a, he's a far third year. He's ahead of the curve uh, compared to where Drew Brees was in two thousand and what four or five. His breakout year. His, his breakout year was his fourth year. Russell Wilson's fourth year is going to be. He's already had a breakout year. He's going to be. He's going to elevate himself to that next. That upper echelon, like that upper, he's already in the upper upper echelon. I'm saying that that Brady uh, Manning um, zone, like MVP during the regular season type area. You know, I I I slightly disagree with you. I think he's on the cusp of that uh, upper echelon zone or yeah, upper saying. echelon. Excuse me. I think right now he's like he's out on the outside looking in. I haven't. I mean, outside that uh that uh Green Bay Packer game. I mean. I, I kind of want to see him just like where he just light, he's lighting up the team and they, and people say you know what he has arrived. I haven't seen that moment from him even though he has won a championship. I just kind of want to see him put the team on his back and say think you about know it like what? This. this is my show. 
Think about it like this. Um, I, no, I, I know exactly what you're saying, and my, my thinking has always been because we've talked about this before. The receivers, everyone, receivers on Seattle. I, I don't think any of them were drafted. Um, no, uh, Golden Tate was drafted, but he wasn't. Well, Golden Tate's gone. Yeah. Golden Tate's gone. Um, but the thing is, uh, this is it sort of reminds me because he's been obviously he's been more he's been above average starter. Oh yeah, by Russell, far. But by far. this kind of reminds me of, and I think he's better than Don McNabb. This reminds me of, of when McNabb got T.O. Remember how he was kind of just no. Remember he how he kind of no, no, had no, okay no, years. I, I he didn't throw a lot of numbers, but then the year they got To, he had his best numbers yet. Went to the Super Bowl. No, I, I think I it's the same thing with Russ Wilson, except a level higher than that. No, no, yeah. With Jimmy, I, I think that's he's a great, I think that's a great analogy because honestly, for the longest, I actually I think Donovan Nab will get a. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. I think he had Hall of Fame talent. I just don't think. Talk it off time. We know, we know. We yeah, yeah off thank you. Don't, 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 don't let me start on Donovan Nab. <laughs> don't let me start on him. But no, I, I, I like that analogy because I think I still think they another need, they need another receiver in the uh, in the draft. But this is a huge get for Seattle. Honestly, if uh, if all their defensive uh, key players come back from their injuries, uh, I know uh, Cam Chancellor has a torn MCL. Uh, Errol Thomas has a torn labrum, and uh, Richard yeah, Sherman has yeah, a uh, give me shoulder. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Richard Sherman has a has an elbow that he's not going to get the surgery. So hopefully, he comes back from that. But if if all goes well according to plan, I don't see them not I don't see them not making the playoffs again or not making the Super Bowl. I, that's my personal opinion. I think it's a a slam dunk for Seattle. The Saints. Hey, you got a center. You got a center. Who knows yeah, he the knows play? The snap count. He know he knows the snap count. Yeah, <laughs> he, he can hike the ball. Exactly, he can hike the ball. He can hike the ball. When, uh, whenever on a hard count, two count, count, five count. <laughs> oh, um, but I, I just don't know what the Saints are doing. I think they're. Gonna, I think the window for them. It's, yeah. Well, it's, it's close. It's, um, I don't know. It, uh, talk to me about in 2020. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're kind of just they're revamping, going a whole different direction. You know, Sean Payton gave up uh, play calling duties and took a pay cut. So, uh, we'll, well, no, he didn't take a pay cut. Sorry, oh, he just I gave a play call duties. Sorry, he just yeah. gave a play call duties. Let's not get let's not get frivolous with that man's pay. Uh, right. pay, oh, no, pay I got, you know what? In my head, in my head, I got Sean Payton confused with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. No. <laughs> um, no moving on. What do you think about the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, man? I I think they're trying the Philadelphia 76ers strategy of. Um, Fake it till you make it, you know. Make it, <laughs> make it say turn down trades for what? Um, just and it's a weird thing. Like Philadelphia, it's like a it's a blue collar town, and they got these two franchises that keep trying all these these analytics. Um, they've got these two mad scientists. It just doesn't seem right. For, you expect this in like San Francisco, Seattle, Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. but not in in Philadelphia. I think it old Philly. You expect like a hard nosed coach who's gonna be like, "Yo, Lashawn McCoy, we're gonna run the ball down people's throats. We're not trading him for." A linebacker I knew in college. Like, that's the, that's like that's like when George Bush, like he's almost like the George W. Bush head coaches. Like you know, he hired uh, Michael Brown, his uh, his roommate at Texas, at the, to head up FEMA right before Katrina. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he he um, he nominated one of his good friends for the Supreme Court. Like this is just this has Michael, this has George W. Bush written all over it. Yeah, this is feeling it, it, it's a bad look. It's a bad look for Chip. I had high hopes, and he's just doing. Ridiculous things all of a sudden. I, I I don't know where he's going with this. I, I hope he has a plan I don't know about to draft Mariota, which I think is a bad idea. But uh, I don't know where to go. I don't know where he's going. You know, I honestly think I'm gonna I'm gonna give him some leeway. I mean that that leeway is is ooh that might be out the window in a minute. But I I'm giving I'm giving some leeway. I didn't agree with actually I didn't agree with him uh, getting rid of uh, uh, Deshaun Jackson last year, and then you let you let Jeremy Macklin walk, and then you let go McCoy. Now, was it like a personality fit or a scheme fit? I mean, uh, I'm, actually, I'm, a, I'm of the mindset that you always tailor your scheme to the players that you have, especially the upper echelon players. No, but, um, actually, go ahead. Okay, I gotta be honest. Deshaun. Okay, let me just. I'm gonna say two things real quick. Deshaun Jackson. I actually get why they would. I, I I get why they wanted to get rid of him, but I don't get why they released him and made those loose connections to his. Uh, 
his gang connections back gang, home gang in LA. Relations. That was that was weird. They could have traded him and gotten some for him, but I get why they got rid of him. From what I heard, he was just a he's a cantankerous dude in the locker room, and I can understand why a new head coach would be like, you know what, let's just move on from him, find a new receiver. We got Jeremy Macklin. But the thing I don't understand is, well, no, the, other, the second thing I had, second, second thing I had to say was Frank Gore. The reason he said he didn't want to sign uh, with the Eagles because you know he reneged on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, allegedly, what he was, what was rumored was because he thought that uh, Chip Kelly was a little too overbearing. You know, based on how he runs his program, he's just he almost reminds me of <sighs> he he almost reminds me of Mark Jackson and Golden State. When people said he was just a little overbearing, yeah, he's successful, but he just rubbed people the wrong way. That's what that's what the that's the reputation that Chip Kelly's getting right now, and it's unfortunate because he's a great coach, great coaching mind. His, pers- his personality, he's got that college coach personality. It's like my way, or I'll, he thinks he's gonna find another five star recruit. Doesn't work like that in NFL, bro. <laughs> well, uh, like I really don't have a defense for the man. I, I'm just giving him leeway because I want to see his plan um, hopefully come to fruition or at least play out or lack thereof. But I don't know how you explain trading three of your – or letting go three of your marquee players. And now now all you have is Jordan Matthews and Riley Cooper. Yeah, and and one other thing about uh, – not not only does he love to bring his Oregon guys, Kiko Alonso, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera, Actually, et cetera. I'm not a down yeah. on that. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not either. No, I'm, but I'm, saying, I'm, saying other, th- I'm saying pundits are bad. Are are, are down on uh, Kiko Alonso. I thought well, if he didn't have his ACL torn this year, I thought it would have been a great linebacker. First, that's just my thoughts. He played behind a great defensive line, but you know you're right. But the other thing about it is this: um, with Chip Kelly at Oregon, he was known for bringing it. He didn't have five star recruits. I said five star recruits earlier, and I thought no, he didn't have a lot of those guys at Oregon. He had to find guys for his system, three star guys. He didn't have superstars. Remember, he's, that's the difference between him and like Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll dealt with uh, the Matt Liners, the the Carson Palmers, the Reggie Bushes, five star guys. He dealt with those superstar personalities mm-hmm. at a younger age. Chip Kelly is used to dealing with guys who did, who had offers from Boise State. And, Diamond and uh, the rough. Diamonds in the rough, and he thinks he's gonna do an NFL. Yo, not gonna work out that way. But anyways, let's back to another franchise that's looking for. Oh, but before, another, before we before we before we uh, uh, migrate from this topic, do you think he has a plan? Uh, he's got to have a plan, and do you think it'll come to fruition? Everyone thinks they have a plan until they get hit. Uh, was a wise man once. Love the Mike Tyson. Love, love the Mike Tyson. About to, Everyone has a plan. Until they get he hit. about to get he about to get socked. <laughs> um, so no, I, I'm just I'm just hoping okay. it. I'm I'm just hoping he doesn't. Because when he first came in, I thought he was going to be the next Jimmy Johnson. Now he's turning. He looks like he's turning to the next Bobby Petrino. Hopefully that doesn't come to fruition. But I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give him. Some, I'm gonna give him some enough rope. Give him enough rope. If he hangs himself or he pulls himself up, that's up to him. All right. So final right. verdict on. So final verdict on the Eagles. Who's who's worse off right now? The Eagles after the free free agency. The Eagles or the 49ers? Ooh. Ooh. That's a, I'm a, I'm gonna say the Niners only because, I mean, yikes! They lost, Har- they lost Jim Harbaugh. They lost everybody. Let's just, just go, go ahead and say it. Don't Smith. even go down the list. Don't even go down the list. They they lost everybody. Alden Smith, you never know if he's gonna be there. He'll be. They got Tory James. What's with the Smiths? They got Tory Smith now. Um, <laughs> it's, who else? Am I forgetting anyone? They lost Frank Gore. Uh, Justin Justin Smith is contemplating retiring. Um. Contemplating or is it official? I think he's contemplating. contemplating. I don't think it's official that he is retired. Okay. Um, yeah, so Vernon Davis is getting up there in years. Kaepernick is coming off a, a down year. He, but he is working with he is working with uh, Kurt Warner to uh, alleviate some of his uh, flaws. They lost. Man, this <laughs> franchise. They went. I don't know. Ever since that rumor about Jim Harbaugh getting traded to the Browns, Browns. it's just been downhill since then. Honestly, but, I I agree with you. Uh, it, was it, off. Is, it is the Niners by far. I same, didn't feel same bad. Division, Seahawks and the Rams. Guess what? Top two draft pick next year. I, you people, you might say too soon, but nah, nah. Just being clairvoyant. 
because I feel um, bad for Jim Tomsula. I really do, because he thought he was going to have a rebound, like the team was going to have a rebound year, but you lose your all-pro linebacker. You lose, you may be losing your all-pro uh, lineman, uh, defensive lineman. I think, they, I think they lost one of their good, their, uh, they lost uh, Chris Culver, one of their uh, promising cornerbacks. They've lost Frank Gore, the heart and soul of the team, in my personal opinion. Uh, Vernon Davis, he had an off year. Catherine you know. Oaks. Hopefully, it doesn't regress. I, I just don't see how the team wins six games. No, seven games. I give them seven games. I don't, I don't see how they win seven games. They can probably win five or six, but uh, yeah, for sure. The 49ers, they free agency wasn't good to them at all. No, after free agency, they kind of look like um like Annie. It's a hard not life for the Niners. <laughs> Set of free agents, they get tricked. <laughs> No, they get Set up ballers. Their players retire. <laughs> Man, Patrick Wills, that that's like the Glenn Coffey uh, move. You know, he allegedly he had a religious awakening. That's what Glenn Coffey said a few years ago. I don't know what's happened in San Francisco that's given everyone all these religious awakenings, but you know, it's uh it's unfortunate. It really is. At least they got to at least they got to open up the new stadium. <laughs> Missed the playoffs, but yeah. Ooh, but uh I- yeah, right now. What's your prediction I think we can, with them? I was gonna, yeah, we can, I think we can declare the Niners the official losers, uh, the toilet bowl losers of the of free agency. My prediction? <sighs> okay, without looking at their schedule, um, same division as the Seahawks. And the Cardinals, don't uh, forget the them. Card- Cardinals, right. How do I forget to mention the Cardinals? Cardinals and the Rams? Boy, I, I, they might get one win out of that. That's one in five of your division. You know what I'm saying? With only ten games to go. Like <laughs> six wins. Tom yeah. Sula, I don't know if he does he know what he's doing? I don't know. They they hired they hired him because he was a, a team guy. I don't Hard I, I, I get too. worried. I know, yes, but I hate when teams when it's always a bad sign when teams fire a great head coach and then replace him with someone who's not as difficult, who's a team player. And it almost that almost reeks of they want someone who won't argue with them. That is not a good, like, who won't be a, a target of dissent, a voice of dissent. That's not a good thing. That's a cult. <laughs> we there, saw what happened in Waco. <laughs> they burned those things down. There could be no dissension among the ranks. Yo, why are you leaning in, like, when you said that? That was, that was a real 1984 type. So, but, uh, yeah, I, seven, six wins, man. Yeah, I'm saying six or seven. Seven at the most, six, eight. Not I don't. Six I don't know if Kaepernick. Hard. I don't know if Kaepernick, Bolden, and, and Torrey Smith are enough to to win you that win you many games in that division. Uh, no. I'm done with the Niners, man. I'll say this: if the Niners make a wild card or in a contention for a wild card, by by far, bar none, Tom Sula, <laughs> coach of the year. Oh man, yo, but uh, yeah. So, anyways. That's day one of free agency. <laughs> like Jesus, when they roll back the stone, we about to be gone, man. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta roll back the stone on this one. Day two. Hopefully, Come hopefully out. day two is uh, just as uh, entertaining as day one, but I highly doubt what it will. We'll see. We'll see, man. Thanks again for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> check out our other videos. We'll be talking about other sports. Hopefully, uh, NBA and. NHL, if uh, you get to uh, get abreast of uh, the, the the happenings of uh, the try NHL. to find a rink. <laughs> I try. I try to hit up the uh, the Rangers. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> they're, they're they're having a good year. Oh, so. oh, so, oh uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no. serious. Well, now, now that there's no no longer ice on the streets of New York City, I want I need somewhere else to find ice. There you go. Madison Square Garden is good this time of year. All right, man. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Appreciate you. Peace.